it friends and welcome to the Art Cake Experience channel. Christina here. I'm so happy to have you back. Uh, today's um, video, uh, last video that you saw was the repairman of that little girl over there. She's already on herself and she's happy to be there. Uh, and today I'm going to be sharing with you another sort of repairman thing uh, video where I'm going to share how to adapt any well this is a very cute uh, cake topper how to adapt it to a different season so this is what happened i made this cake topper look how cute it is it's um winnie the pooh and tiger cake topper for a client but um she had to she couldn't pick it up she had to um she told me she couldn't pick it up. She couldn't. She couldn't make it. Okay, so I was left with this um, this cake topper, and I was like, okay, what do I do with this? I already spent time doing this topper, and um, I don't have any babies or anybody to give it to. But I thought, well, I love autumn. I love the season of before this season before winter. Here in Portugal, we have either a very rainy autumn or a very if I, if you could see today is blue and shiny and um, sunny, but it's cold and I love it. I love days like that. But and I decided, well, this is what we're gonna do. Uh, for my friends on the Art Cake Experience channel, on my YouTube channel, I'm going to be transforming these little two guys. You can see them here. They're too cute. I'm going to be transforming these two guys because they're hugging, you know, it's like it's cold and they need their friend. So I'm going to be transforming them into a fall scene or an autumn scene. So stay with me and let's see how I can change this um this leftover topper into something really cute here for the channel uh i hope you stay with me and i'll see you in a bit so i'm going to start by deciding what colors i'm going to be using this has to be very fall like colors of course i'm going to be using some um autumn leaves this is like um like a maple leaf uh, with the jector and veneer so i'm going to be using this one i'm not the flower person so i don't have much to work with with flowers but i do have that and i do have mats to uh, make it let me just <laughs> move them here because i like hello <laughs> to give them some shape so i'm again i'm going to be using saracino uh, model pasta model this is my go-to paste for everything that i do and i'm going to be going through these colors so i have two shades of green okay and maybe with a little bit of brown i'm going to be creating with this to a darker one this one is quite light but i'm going to be dusting it later i have yellow red and i have a little bit of orange probably good we'll do a darker shade of yellow with a little bit of brown okay so i'm going to start by mixing and matching the colors that i want i'm going to use this base as um as the base of the topper this could go into a cake but today i'm going to do it here on this base uh so i'm going to cover a bit of the base with a dark shade uh with brown probably with brown i'm going to give her like, give it like a like a woody uh effect on the bottom and then we're going to do the leaves what i was thinking is i'm going to do a hat for tiger okay a hat like a warm hat and maybe some mittens and i'm going to do a scarf for winnie pooh and maybe some ear warmers that way we can transform it into a winter well not winter fall uh, autumn um theme or scene right so let's start with the base i'm going to do the brown and the wood like effect well my friends here you have a very um fast time lapse of how to do the wooden effect i do have other videos that you will see here in the links of this uh video on my youtube channel where you can see the step-by-step -step process on how to make a wooden effect so now just enjoy this time lapse and let's wait to see the result
Love my friends. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking a few of my pasta model from Saracino and I'm going to be creating some shades for the, for the leaves that we're going to be placing around these two characters to make it more into a fall or a, an autumn effect. So I'm going to be mixing some colors here. I'm going to start with green then I'm going to mix some green with brown to have some sort of dusty green color. Uh, we're going to go for yellows and uh, some light brown or yellowish brown, orange and reds. So these are the tones that I'm going to use for the leaves and then I'm going to proceed to, um, with my rolling pin to roll them out to cut all the leaves. Okay, so I already rolled out all of the colors. I'm finishing with the last one, the red one, and I'm going to proceed to cut some leaves with the, um, this is like a um, maple leaf cutter. I think I'm not, I'm not the flower person. I don't know what leaf is what, but it looks, it looks uh, autumn-y. It's like, well, so it's this one and it has this has already the the, the, the vine there um, marked so it's just a jacked and it's easy for me to use since like I said uh, hello to my friends there are all uh, flower per people my flower artists but not me this is not me so I have all the colors here I'm going to be cutting two and two of each all the leaves cut I'm going to let them set I'm going to uh, first I'm going to give them some um, some shape in the um, on the uh, uh, on the sides with a bowling uh, tool and a mat I will show you how I do it and then I'm going to let them set so I can paint them later while they set we're going to be working on the details of Winnie the Pooh and Ty. now for the flowers to give some movement and to I don't know how my friends that make flowers call this but uh, I guess it's make some um, I don't know frills not frills but give some movement into the into the leaves I like to use the metal rolling pin and the mat so this is a small one I'm just going to go and smooth it with it smooth it is it I don't know how you I don't know the slangs of um, flower making because I don't make flowers uh, but it just gives some movement and some flair and uh, it looks way prettier like this. So I'm going to be doing this 
with the small one into the smaller one and with the bigger one into the bigger ones. See, so I just give some movement into it. There you go. And I'm gonna let them set like this for later, uh, dusting them with a little bit of color. Okay, so now that the leaves are already, you know, flurred and, and they have this movement and they have all this that I did in the mat, then I need to check it with my flower friends. How do you call this step? Uh, I'm going to let them set and then later I'm going to color it with some dust. And now for, let me just take this little two guys here. What I want to do is to give a hat to a tiger and some maidens and a scarf to uh, Winnie the Pooh with some ear warmers. So um, uh, I think for the scar, I'm going to be using blue because it contrasts very well with the pink, I'm sorry, with the red and the yellow. For the hat of um, tiger, I'm thinking either a purple, I think it's gonna be a purple, and also for the mittens with some white. And I have some pink in here, some pinkish to go maybe with this or with this and blue and white and black for the um, for the ear uh, warmers. So I think I'm gonna go around those. I'm gonna start with the hat for a uh, tiger or tiger, how do you call We used to call them tiger in uh, Spanish, tiger, uh, not tiger, but I don't know if it's a bad translation, uh, but I don't know if we call it tiger or tiger, but the little friend of Winnie the Pooh. It's going to have a hat. So for the hat, I'm just going to do, I'm going to do a ball first. Just move this around so we have enough space. I'm just going to move the leaves to here so we don't have any accidents with the leaves as well. I'm going to create a ball. From this ball, I'm going to flatten between my hands, the palms of my hand, because I want it to be a little bit brown in here. And then you can either use this. I'm improvising, guys, okay? I'm improvising as I go along because this was not the idea. The idea, this client wanted this uh, topper for a little boy's, uh, I think it was first birthday or second birthday and um last minute she couldn't pick it up she didn't want it but it's fine i don't mind i i uh i always take advantage of everything i love my my sugar doll so i take advantage of everything that is left is not the first thing that ha the first time that happens to me so um here it is on a video for my youtube channel so i'm going to start like this let me measure how big it is Okay, oh, nah. Okay, so maybe maybe in the back, maybe towards the back. What I want to do is now make it more like a cone shape, right? Now that I know that the size is correct. It doesn't look like much right now, but it's going to look in a minute. Okay, good, good. I like it this way. Okay, so I'm going to start by giving a little bit of texture here. Because maybe with this one, I'm just going to go and give some texture to the hat. Because, I mean, everything is about texture with this too. Uh, let me just give some texture to the hat as well. So with this little part here, I'm just pinching and tapping, 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 tapping until I get some sort of texture, see? Okay, 
So now that I have this texture, I can place the hat and I'm going to need a little piece of, you can use a um, toothpick or you can use a wire. Let me just get a toothpick to insert because it's gonna have a little ball here on the top. Okay, so I'm going to be using a toothpick, but not a whole, like half of it. I'm gonna cut it in half using my, sorry, using this. Gonna cut this in half. There we go. These are a little bit hard because they're being out here for a while. Um, the glue. Then what I want to do is to give some oh, maybe with the dressing tool better. Because the dressing tool has this marking here and it will give me more of a deeper uh, indentation there just to make the hat a little bit more fluffy, right? Okay. Now with the white one, I'm going to make the, the, the ball on the top of the hat. And also, just get a little piece. And I'm also going to give her like, give him like a fluffy ribbon here. I don't know if you can see it, like a fluffy part in here as well. So first I'm going to roll down just need it today's like i said it's cold the sun it's cold so it tends the paste tends to get a little bit harder than usual again if you have enough light in there let me put some more light in here there you go and just rolling out a piece of White. I'm just going to press it with my hands to flatten it a little bit, but not too much. Okay. okay, now it looks more like a winter hat. Before it looked weird, it looked like a party hat. <laughs> now it does look like a winter hat. You just cut the excess here. I hope you're seeing there correct. I'm just cutting the excess that I have underneath that I won't be using. And I'm going to do sort of the same um, technique that I did here with, uh, with the small ball pin a uh, small ball tool right you're going to go and do some tabbing again so you tap 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 just to create this texture make sure you push on the top and the bottom just to make it fluffy see so tap 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 all around it underneath as well this is more winter but let's say it's a cold it's a cold um autumn right because it looks more wintry than a cold autumn but it starts getting cold in autumn so or fall how do you want to call it okay there you go and with this little piece of white i'm going to create do a little ball Okay, and I'm going to do the same kind of um, shape or texture here. 
Okay, and this will go right here. Okay, so Tigger has a hat. Now he needs some mittens to match the hat uh, for the mittens. I'm going to use blue also, but reversed. I'm going to do the mittens in white first and then some details in um, blue, right? So for the mittens, I think I'm going to roll this out because these hands are already in place. So I have to make a way of just covering the tip of his hands. It's going to take um, some patience there. Okay, I hope you can see there. I'm going to cover, let me see my finger. There you go. Because I don't see very well what you're watching. Okay, so just going to go like this. Right, and then just cut what I don't need, which is here. Don't worry about this, it's going to be covered by something blue. Okay. And since he already has some, um, some texture, I'm just going to press. And the texture, you can almost see through the texture of, um, of, the, of his paw. I'm going to make this smaller. And also just glue it here. Okay, let's hope I don't make a mess. This this should have been done uh, before, but since the client just decided not to take them last minute, I decided to do this fun thing afterwards. <laughs> So I think it is covered. Yeah, pretty much. Let me just cut this in here. This excess that we don't need. Perfect. And I'm gonna press also because you can see there the texture from the uh, the paw, right? So with the blue, I'm just going to cut a couple of stripes with blue, just place them there, just to match the hat. Sorry if I'm moving the table. Okay, there you go. Thin stripes. Okay, another thin stripe. There you go. Everything starts so organized <laughs> when you start working. My friends who do live demos know what it's like. You start with everything so neat and organized, and then you start working, things just start getting everywhere. So now I'm just going to cut the axis here. There you go. Actually, from one, I think I can have both, both ones. I need a, with the help of a dressing tool, just to get there to the back. There you go. Okay. 
Okay, now I think Tiger's mittens need some something. Some something, some personality. Ah, I know, I have some stars here. So I'm just gonna cut a medium star and place it in each mitten. Other one is just a white sock, right? There you go. <laughs> Cute. Love it. I hope you can see. I'm going to move the camera later on just to work on um, Winnie the Pooh so you will see it better. Okay. There you go. Our tiger is done. Let's move on to Winnie the Pooh. Hello, guys. I'm back. Uh, so, so far, this is what we got. We have the hat on and the mittens on a tiger. And now we're going to do Winnie the Pooh. I decided to change angles because from the top, when we're working on 3D, uh, let me lower this light. When we're working on 3D um, figures, when you look from the top, it's a little bit um, distracting. It's, you cannot see everything. I did it for the leaves. The leaves are still uh, drying in here. We're going to paint them in a second. Let me just move the camera a little bit down. And we are going to do the um, ear warmers and a scarf for Winnie the Pooh. So I'm going to go for... I'm going to go for purple. Actually, it changed. At the beginning, I said I was going to do blue here. But it's going to be so... It, it was going to be very... Um, like basic colors, you know, red, yellow, and blue, like primary colors. And uh, also the flag of my country is that color, so I was like, it distracted me a little bit. So I'm going to do the uh, purple, of course, I have to do some purple, purple and pink for the, uh, for the scarf and the ear warmers. So with the purple, I'm just going to roll, them. look at them like, hi, <laughs> I'm just gonna move them here. Uh, with the purple, I'm going to roll out a, a longer stripe for the scarf, right? To make it nice and fluffy. Uh, this is this art paste that I took for my repair kit on uh, Birmingham when I went to Birmingham for the K competition. So they all are all they are all they are all still very. Um, uh, organized and tied and, and uh, wrapped in paper and everything so now it's hard so I'm going to start kneading it actually I think this is quite a lot we're not going to be using that much okay so once I knead it and I have it in the right texture that I want, still not, still too, still cold because you can see that it breaks when you, when you pull it out. So I need to knead it and to give it more warmth in order to uh, have the right consistency that I want, right? Okay. So now I start by creating uh, like a long, elongated figure form right and then i'm going to roll it out this is like a like a sausage when you start right and then just start rolling it out rolling it out until it has the thickness that you want i don't want it too thick i don't want it too thin so i think i'm gonna go with that and what i'm going to do i'm gonna leave it here i'm gonna take some of the pink because I'm gonna mix uh, those, uh, I'm gonna do some stripes for the, for the scarf, right? So I'm gonna roll out also some pink in here. No, the mittens turn out so cute. And the hat, he looks warm. With his friend's hugs as well. Okay, so I'm going to roll out also some pink. Okay. Just remove this part. We don't need. There you go. Okay. 
Now, with the pink, I'm going to be using, I think I showed you before, let me pour this away, so it won't dry, and this one too, so it won't dry. I think I showed you before that I like to cut, I don't know if it was in this video or in another video, um, with the, the blades of the X-Acto knife, because you have a clean, very good and clean cut. So I'm just going to cut some even stripes with this. It's like one cut and you have it all right. You have clean, straight cut. And sometimes when we use the, the pizza roller, it brings the paste up. I'm gonna show it in a second. Look. So see, we have a very clean stripe of pink. We cut some more because I don't know how many we're going to need. And I always prefer to have a little bit extra than not a lot. Okay, let me set this apart. Now on my on the purple stripe that I cut, I'm going to start get the glue. I'm going to start placing this, these ones with some distance between them. Okay. Can you look, can you see? Let me show you. See, okay. This is for the scarf of Winnie the Pooh. Not too much. Today I'm using the glue, but usually I use only water. The advantage of using water is I'm using glue because the piece is already quite dry. Because like I said before, this, this was done early November, no, early October for a client that um, decided last minute not to pick it up. But it's fine. And um, she, uh, the piece was done. I wanted to do it before the competition. So it was done. It already has like, a, it's, it's a month old. So uh, it's quite dry and I rather use the glue. But if the paste was not so dry, I always rather use water because the water doesn't leave me any markings when it dries. See? And one more, and I think we're good with that. Let me put this aside and this because we don't want any accidents. Okay, so once I have this, I'm going to roll it again with my rolling pin in the same directions of the stripes, okay? Because what you want is to blend them together but not changing the shapes of the stripes. Otherwise, it looks like one is on top of the other and it looks kind of weird. So now you have some sort of pattern like a fabric. And uh, with the, now we're gonna use the rolling pizza pin, the rolling pizza cutter. I'm gonna trim the sides more or less to the length or the width that I want. I'm going to measure it because I think it's a little bit big. However, we want a big scarf, but still a little bit big. I'm going to cut just a little bit more. There you go. And now the length. Let me just... Uh, we have an issue here. They're already glued together. And I want the scarf to go in the back. So I'm gonna, I might have to cut it and then place it on the other side, okay? So if this is one side, I'm gonna cut half around here. And in this part here, in the bottom, I'm going to cut, make some uh, cuts, like lines here, just to look like the, you know, the bottom of the scarf that has this fringe 
uh, and I'm going to do this with this. Do the sort of a fringe that if these two were not glued together, I would do this separately, of course. But since look, so we have our our fringe here. So since these are glued together, what I'm going to do is I'm going to narrow this part and try to place it right here with my dressen tool as inside as I can. There you go. Okay, you see? So it's right in between them. Uh, I can push them back here as well. And uh, now, I'm sorry, I have to move into the bag. I'm just going to add some, uh, some water or glue in here. Okay, and what I want to do is to keep like a fluffy finish to it. There you go. Okay, so it looks like fat and fluffy doesn't look like it's okay there you go we have one side i'm going to do the same in the other side so i'm going to do the fringe first on the other the other piece that we have and i wanted to keep it long because you know a long fluffy warm scarf is always nice and we're going to do the same. Sorry about that. I just keep putting my glue very far away from me, but it's to avoid accidents because I'm very clumsy. Okay, so this will go here. And I'm going to just narrow it here as well and place it in between these two as far inside as I can with the help of my dressing tool. There you go. So nobody will see the joints in there, right? And do the same. I'm just gonna wrap it very fat and fluffy. Okay. We have actually a tiger's ear in the middle of it, but it's okay. Just put it like that. And now in the back, I'm just going to place one, so one on top of the other. There you go. And give some movement in here. Oh, look how cute. There you go. Okay, now for the ear warmers, i just remove this so we're not going to use. I'm going to use this pink from the scarf. And do it just like the ball that we did here. But bigger okay and we're going to do the same um the same effect let me just move this same oh don't go <laughs> there you go the same effect just tabbing with my um small ball pin ball tool sorry We're going to make two of this. There you go. So you can see here how it looks. I'm going to do another one with this for the other ear. We have another one and using some black I'm going to do the middle you know the the headband that uh, brings them together holds them together okay and for this one I'm just going to make ball roll it out I think this is too much make a ball roll it out thicker in the middle 
So I'm just going to go down in one side and go down in the other side. So thicker in the middle and a thinner in on the sides. There you go. See? So this will go here. He has a handband, <laughs> a headband. Look at Winnie the Pooh with a headband. Okay. And in here, we're going to place the big warmers. Okay, there you go. See, so we have some ear warmers and we have the scarf and we have the hat and the mittens. Now let's color those leaves and let's place them around this design to finish our project. Hello everybody, I'm back. So now to finish our design, we need to paint these little leaves here. So what I brought is some different kinds of dusting. I brought brown from Cerachino. I brought some uh, uh, green. This is from a Spanish brand that I really like. Uh, and we have some dark brown, um, burgundy, and holy green. Uh, what I want to do is to add um, a darker shape to each one of the leaves. So we're going to start with the very light green ones. And this is a dusting box that I took the idea from my friend Miriam who does flowers and does a lot of dusting. What happened with the dusting is it goes everywhere. So if you have a box like this, you just put some um, uh, kitchen, uh, you know, paper towels and it the dust will stay here and doesn't go everywhere. So I'm gonna start with these two shades of green and for these ones, I'm going to use the holy green color and of course, you will need a brush just for dusting, right? So I'm going to use a very, um, you know, it's a brush, uh, almost like a makeup brush. It's a very soft brush with long hair that will help me get this color. So I'm just going to do this. Let me see if you can see it. I'm going to be dusting. Take the excess off and dust from the outside in, okay, through all of the flower. Always from the outside in. Now I'm going to do the same process, but with a darker shade of green on the green leaves. I'm going to be using some orange for the yellow ones. Again, I'm taking the excess off, just dust it. Okay, so now I'm going to be using some uh, brown from uh, Zarashino. This is um, edible uh, dust powder, and it's sort of like a chocolatey uh, tone. So I'm going to use this one for the, um, this is like the dark yellow that we use mixing yellow and brown. 
can turn out some mocha caramel color. And I'm going to be dusting it with this chocolatey color, brown chocolate. Okay, there you go, just to give some depth into it. And for the orange and the red, I'm going to be using some dark red color. Uh, dust as well. So let me just show you the color. It's like a very dark burgundy red. So I'm going to mix it with this little bit of orange that I have here for the for the orange ones here. Okay. Like this. The idea of this is just to add, you know, that shade of colors from autumn that you will find and also on the red ones. On the red, I'm going to go deeper, especially on the top and in the center to the sides as well. The center of the leaf. Actually, I'm going to leave it lighter. Okay, so I have all my leaves dusted, and what I'm going to do next is just place them around these two little guys here. I don't know if you can see them here, just to give a more of um, fall theme into this. So I'll be right back. Okay, now we're going to finish up these two sweet little guys here uh, that we transformed from simple Winnie the Pooh and Tiger or Tigger to this uh, fall uh, theme with some cold in there. So what I'm going to do now is just add some glue here and there just to place a few of the leaves. Okay, you want to place some leaves here and there. Different colors, just mix them, match them. Leaving the smaller ones too. Here on the front, maybe one on Tiger's lap. I'm gonna go for a darker green and a red one here on her lap, on his lap. There you go. And here are these feet, okay. And then more of a greenish one over here. With some, it's okay if you don't use them all, but like I always say, I'd rather have more than none. Okay. Just going to throw them around. Look how cute. It's going to look super cute. And we transform a whole design into a theme. So sometimes you just need to add tiny little details in order to free something to become something else. <laughs> Not just, um, let me just put one brown here. There you go, another one around here with maybe a green one. Actually, also taking in consideration a 360 degree, I'm sorry, <laughs> my, my tongue's twisted. I've been talking for a while now. Uh, like a, uh, a 360 uh, sort of design, because you never know. And if you're delivering a cake and the cake is, you know, it's a round cake that's going to be in the center of a table, you want your uh, customer to have that full um, experience. Let me put one here with Winnie the Pooh. Maybe a brown one here. One in his, maybe one over here. Oh, I was going to do that. Let me just put one around or here, here, 
because he has too much orange in it. So now it's going to have like a, no, I'm going to put it down like that. Okay. Maybe some, I have a yellow one in here for tiger. Okay. Some more on this side. And maybe some more here towards the front. One here and one here. And they use them all. And here we have a fall theme. Let me just cover the glue before I do something very bad. And everything just <laughs> goes like, you know, spread around. Uh, and here you have, uh, I transformed these two little guys from a cake topper for a baby that the client left behind into a fall theme um, piece that you can use for any of your cakes. If you are interested in learning how to make these two little guys, drop me a message below because I'm considering doing a class on a private Facebook group about this. Um, if not, well, you have a way to create different props in order to um, to improve a design or to even change the theme of a design. And that could be for anything. Imagine you have a little doll. So just by adding uh, here and there different aspects or different dresses or different um, accessories, you can uh, just change the theme of your cake topper. I hope that you, let me just put this up so I can see you guys. I hope I could, I don't, but I hope I could. And I really hope that you enjoyed this class. Thank you so much for being here with me. Let me just focus here so you will have better light. Uh, thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video and if you like this channel, I kindly ask you to subscribe leave me a review, just put a thumbs up and I will gladly, gladly appreciate it. And remember, if you want to know more about everything that's going on behind the scenes on the Art Cake Coach, not only on the Art Cake Coach, but on the Cake Community, I invite you to be part or to listen to my podcast, the Art Cake Coach podcast on Spotify, Anchor, Apple Podcasts, and your favorite podcast site is available everywhere or in a lot of places. I will be leaving here the link uh, in the description so you can go and check it out. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for accompanying me to do this. And I will leave you as I always leave you, my friends. Stay safe and stay creative. See you next time.